According to Wikipedia, typology in Christian theology and in biblical exegesis is a doctrine or theory concerning the relationship of the Old Testament to the New Testament. Typology is very useful for grasping truths about the Catholic faith because it is both at the same time simple and profound. Through typology, people, places, and events from the Old Testament are seen as a foreshadowing or a prefigurement of people, places, and events in the New Testament. Typology uses storytelling to deepen our understanding about the Catholic faith. And this is much like the approach that our Lord took to explaining truth, as he spoke in parables and in stories so that everyone could understand. Please listen prayerfully and open your hearts to see the typological prefigurements that lie waiting for us in the Old Testament. Before we examine how the life of St. Patrick of Ireland was prefigured in the Old Testament by the events in the life of Moses, I would like to offer an idea. The Old Testament contains the entire history of the Israelites. The Israelites were the Old Testament people of God. Their entire history, from their inception until their ending, is completely contained in the books of the Old Testament. Similarly, the New Testament is the entire history of the new people of God, the Catholic Church. The New Testament really contains our entire history from start to finish. However, the difference is that for the Israelites, their history is entirely recorded in the Bible. Our history is still being lived out. We are still in the New Testament, even though our history is not recorded entirely in the Bible. With that concept in mind, it becomes clear why the life of St. Patrick would be prefigured in the, in the pages of the Old Testament. If the Old prefigures the New, then the events in the history of the Church would be prefigured by the Old Testament. It's not just people, places, and events from the pages of the books of the New Testament, but the actual history of our church that comprises the actual New Testament. Now we are ready to look at how the life of St. Patrick of Ireland is prefigured in the Old Testament. The story of Moses stretches through the last four books of the Pentateuch in the Old Testament. The birth of Moses occurs in the second chapter of the book of Exodus, and the story of his life continues through the books of Numbers, Leviticus, and finally his death is recorded in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34, verse 5. Because of the vast amount of scripture concerning Moses, it would be too lengthy to go over all of them in this video. For that reason, just the scriptures that are relevant to the prefigurement of St. Patrick will be examined. During the time that the Israelites were in the desert, Moses climbed Mount Sinai and spent 40 days fasting. Exodus 34 verse 28 and he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water, and he wrote upon the tablets the ten words of the covenant. Moses left the land of his birth and fled to Midian. He was in exile, and while he was in Midian he spent his time as a shepherd. Exodus 3 Verse 1 Now Moses fed the sheep of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he drove the flock to the inner parts of the desert, and came to the mountain of God, Horeb. After a period of being in exile, he went back into Egypt to deliver his people from bondage. Going back to Egypt wasn't going to be easy for him. Exodus 4, verses 18, 18 through 20. 
And Moses went his way and returned to Jethro his father-in-law and said to him, I will go and return to my brethren in Egypt, that I may see if they be yet alive. And Jethro said to him, Go in peace. And the Lord said to Moses in Midian, Go and return into Egypt, for they are all dead that sought thy life. Moses therefore took his wife and his sons, and set them upon an ass, and returned into Egypt, carrying the rod of God in his hand. One of the signs Moses performed in Egypt to convince Pharaoh to release the Israelites was turning the Nile River to blood. Exodus 7 verse 20 And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord had commanded, and lifting up the rod, he struck the water of the river before Pharaoh and his servants, and it was turned into blood. Moses used his shepherd's staff to perform many miracles and signs in order to free his people from bondage. Exodus 4 verses 1 and 2 And Moses answered and said, They will not believe me, nor hear my voice. But they will say, The Lord hath not appeared to thee. Then he said to him, What is that thou holdest in thy hand? He answered, A rod. And then again in Exodus 4 verse 17, And take this rod in thy hand, wherewith thou shalt do the signs. There are many signs that Moses performed using his rod. Here are some of them. Moses' staff turns into a snake. He turns the Nile to blood. And he brings water from the rock with his staff. While Moses was in the land of his exile, God spoke to him and gave him his mission to save Israel. Exodus 3, verses 3 and 4. And Moses said, I will go and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he went forward to see, he called to him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he answered, Here I am. When venomous snakes were threatening the people of Israel, Moses saved them from the snakes by mounting a bronze serpent on a pole. The book of Numbers 21 verse 9 Moses therefore made a brazen serpent and set it up for a sign, which when they that were bitten looked upon, they were healed. In all the history of Israel, there was never again a prophet like Moses. He is revered as the ultimate prophet to the people of Israel, and he brought the whole nation out of bondage and gave them God's laws and commandments. Deuteronomy 34 verses 10 to 12 And there arose no more a prophet in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, and all the signs and wonders which he sent by him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to his whole land and all the mighty and all the mighty hand and great miracles which Moses did before all his, all Israel Okay now that we have the Old Testament scriptures in place illustrating parts of the life of Moses we can move on to stories from the life of St Patrick St Patrick was thought to be born sometime in the early 5th century much of the life of St. Patrick was recorded in the Confessions of St. Patrick, although there is much legend and tradition that also carry down the stories of St. Patrick as well. St. Patrick was born to a Christian Roman family in Britain. At a young age he was kidnapped by Irish pirates and brought to Ireland as a slave. He escaped back to Britain where he became a priest. He returned to Ireland to bring Christianity to the people. Here are some aspects of St. Patrick's life 
taken from Wikipedia. In County Mayo, Ireland, there is a mountain called Cropatrick that is over 2,500 feet high. I had the occasion to climb this mountain twice, once by myself and once with my father. Here is an excerpt from Wikipedia. It is now a site of Christian pilgrimage associated with St. Patrick who fasted on the summit for 40 days in the 5th century AD. St. Patrick was taken captive as a youth and brought to Ireland as a slave. While he was a slave in a foreign land, he was a shepherd. Begin from Wikipedia. While in captivity, St. Patrick worked as a shepherd. After St. Patrick escaped his captivity, he returned home to his family and was ordained a priest. He had visions of the Irish he left behind, who pleaded with him to come back and walk among them again. From Wikipedia, acting on the vision, Patrick returned to Ireland as a Christian missionary. One of the many miracles that St. Patrick performed in Ireland was killing a giant snake and then having its blood turn the entire lake red. From Wikipedia, Loch Derg, County Donegal, from Irish Loch Derg meaning Red Lake, it is claimed that Patrick killed a large serpent on this lake and that its blood turned the water red, hence the name. St. Patrick is often pictured with his crozier, or his staff of a bishop. This is a symbol of the bishop being a shepherd and attending his flock. But for St. Patrick, this had a double meaning since he was first a shepherd while in captivity. Later, he became a shepherd of men. With his staff, St. Patrick performed many miracles and signs. From Wikipedia, During his evangelizing journey back to Ireland from his parents' home in Bertelswald, he is understood to have carried with him an ash wood walking stick or staff. He thrust his stick into the ground wherever he was evangelizing and at the places now known as Aspatria, Ash of Patrick. The message of the dogma took so long to get through to the people that there that the stick had taken root by the time he was ready to move on. While Patrick was a slave in Ireland, he had a deep experience with God and even heard God speaking to him audibly. From Wikipedia, Patrick writes in The Confession that the time he spent in captivity was critical to his spiritual development. He explains that the Lord had mercy on his youth and ignorance and afforded him the opportunity to be forgiven of his sins and convert to Christianity. While in captivity, St. Patrick worked as a shepherd and strengthened his relationship with God through prayer, eventually leading him to convert to Christianity. After six years of captivity, he heard a voice telling him that he would go home and that his ship was ready. And one of the most famous stories of St. Patrick is that he drove the snakes out of Ireland. For this, we really don't need a quote from Wikipedia, but here it is anyway. They had all been banished by St. Patrick, chasing them into the sea after they attacked him during a 40-day fast he was undertaking on top of a hill. In all of Ireland, there is no one more revered and more well-known than St. Patrick. He was the father of Christianity in Ireland, and their great patriarch. It's obvious to all that St. Patrick is the primary saint for the Irish. But nevertheless, here is a quote from Wikipedia. 
known as the Apostle of Ireland, he is the primary patron saint of Ireland. Early sources concur in regarding him as the founder of Christianity in Ireland. Now that we have the Old Testament scriptures describing events from the life of Moses, and now that we have some of the events in the life of St. Patrick, we can move on to see how the life of St. Patrick was prefigured by the life of Moses from the Old Testament. Moses fasted 40 days and 40 nights on Mount Sinai. He went to the top of the mountain alone and came back down to give the Ten Commandments to the Israelites. Patrick climbed Crowpatrick in County Mayo, where he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Patrick came down and gave the people of Ireland the gospel of Jesus Christ and the law of the church. Moses fled Egypt and resided in the land of Midian. While he was in exile, he spent his time shepherding the sheep and goats of his father-in-law, Jethro. St. Patrick was taken as a slave to Ireland. While he was in the land of his exile, he spent his time shepherding sheep as a slave. While he was in Midian, God called Moses to go back into Egypt, where he was sure to face hardship and difficulty, in order to deliver his people from bondage and slavery. After Patrick escaped his captivity, God called him back into Ireland, where he was sure to face hardship and difficulty, in order to deliver the Irish from the slavery of sin, Satan, and death. One of the signs that Moses performed in order to release the Israelites was turning the Nile River to blood. One of the signs that St. Patrick performed in order to convert the Irish was turning Loch Derg red with blood after killing a giant snake at the lake. Moses carried his shepherd's staff with him into Egypt, with which he performed many signs and wonders, in order to release the Israelites from their captivity. St. Patrick carried his bishop's crozier, which is a shepherd's staff, with which he performed many signs and wonders also, in order to convert the Irish to Christianity. While Moses was in exile, God spoke to him from the burning bush and revealed himself to him. While St. Patrick was in ex exile in Ireland, he experienced God's presence in a profound way and converted himself to Christianity. He also heard God's voice telling him to escape. Moses mounted a bronze serpent on a pole, which saved the Israelites from the danger of the snakes that were plaguing them in the desert. 
St. Patrick drove all the snakes from Ireland, saving the Irish from the plague of venomous snakes in their land. Moses is the ultimate prophet to the Israelites and is the giver of God's commandment and the law. The religion of the Israelites was given to them by Moses. St. Patrick is the primary saint of the Irish. He is the founder of Christianity in Ireland. The Catholic faith of the Irish was given to them by St. Patrick.